Now, the next presenter uh, has just, we check in every single day with each other. We decided to start doing that just a few weeks ago uh, as sort of an accountability thing. And I'd heard about this individual for years. I didn't realize how bright he actually was until we finally met in person after numerous people told me about his book which is called Double Double, that uh, was one of the best books that someone's ever read. I heard that from probably a dozen people. And once I met him and have gotten to know him, and he's become a Genius Network member, just a very impactful, influential, very smart guy. So let me ask you a question. Do you have a vision statement for your business? Okay. In a few um, months, almost every CEO will be looking at a year-end statement to see if there's needs updating. According to Cameron Harold, it doesn't need updating. It needs to be flushed down the toilet. Vision statements just don't work. Cameron should know after 25 years of mind-shifting experience leading companies to exponential growth and being used as case studies at Harvard Business School. Cameron's title is Vivid Visions, Align Your World. Please welcome my friend, Cameron Harold. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Joe, by the way, I've also joined your 10x group now with Dan Sullivan. I sent my note in confirming, so I start in January. Fantastic. In awesome. I just wanted more time with Dean. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about a concept called vivid visions. And I know we've all got vision statements. Quick show of hands if you have a vision statement. I really would like all of you to throw it out because we all know how they were made. We all know that you started with a whiteboard. You got a whole bunch of your people from your company. You put a bunch of words up on the whiteboard. Right, you put up all the words that inspired you. And then you kind of eliminated a bunch of the words and you end up with something that looks like this. And you call that your, your mission statement and you kind of throw it out there and it goes live. And this is what's supposed to align and inspire your team. But we know that it doesn't align and inspire anybody. So what I want to do is teach you a concept that is being used by some of the top companies on the planet but is also being used by some of the top athletes on the planet. I went to a lunch about 15 years ago, it was run by a high-performance sports psychologist, and he sat us all down in the room, and he said he wanted us to look into a crystal ball. And we thought, oh God, this is going to be a complete waste of time. Well, the reason he wanted us to look into a crystal ball is he wanted us to show us what athletes would do, how high-performance athletes would visualize themselves performing the event. And he said, if as CEOs, if we could visualize ourselves running our company three years in the future, and if we could get everyone to see what we could see, we would win. So this concept we've created is called a vivid vision. It's one thing that will completely align your employees, your customers, and suppliers. Think about this for a second. Remember when Brooke Shields was getting married to Andre Agassi? She didn't like her legs, so she put a picture of what she wanted her legs to look like on her wedding day up on the refrigerator, and she wanted to visualize these perfect legs. Well, we all know the marriage between she and Andre didn't work out. He ended up getting married to Steffi Graf. The crazy thing was the photo on the refrigerator was actually Steffi Graf's legs. <laughs> All right, so visualization works. We now know the number one task you have tomorrow is go back. <laughs> you need to go back to your homes and rip down the photos off your refrigerator. They're motivating the wrong person. So that didn't help us. So we looked, we looked for something that did work. Remember contractors? Anybody here ever built a house or done a renovation? Put your hand up. Almost all of you. So when you build a home, you're really the CEO of the project. You have an idea of what the finished project looks like. You can see it, you can feel it, but you have no idea how to do the electrical, how to do the plumbing, how to do the wiring, how to do the drywall, but you know what it needs to look like, and you have no idea how to manage the sub-trades. So what you do is you give photos and pictures and sketches and things out of magazines, and you hand them to the contractor. Those are your visions of what the home should look like in the future. The contractor then takes those and goes away for a couple of weeks and come back with the blueprints or the plans to make your vision happen. And then they hand the plans to the employees and the employees can literally read your mind. Well, for most of us, when we have a vision statement as one sentence, it doesn't describe your whole company. So the idea with a vivid vision is something much different. Think about the movie, The Sound of Music. Who's seen the movie? Who has never seen the movie, The Sound of Music? Who has no idea what the movie's about? No idea? Name? Felix, so Felix, you're from Europe. You, um, you've never seen the movie The Sound of Music. There's a very famous scene. Don't say anything to Felix, but can I tease you for a little bit? Yes. We know each other, we've talked. So there's a famous scene in the movie where they're having a picnic, and in the picnic scene, I want you to run the same picnic for this group next year, but we're gonna have our kids come to the picnic as well. Should the picnic be at a lake in the mountains or at a park? Don't, 
At a lake. Okay, perfect. And where should we get the food for the picnic? It has to be just like the one in The Sound of Music. Should we get the food at Safeway, or a grocery store, or should we buy it at a hut, or should we bring it in a picnic basket? Local butcher, okay, so local grocery store, perfect. So we're gonna get the food at a local grocery store just like they did in The Sound of Music. We're gonna have the picnic at a lake just like The Sound of Music. And the kids that are gonna be at the picnic, should they be playing baseball, playing croquet, or should they be dancing? Playing soccer, or you have to pick one of the three, unfortunately. Is it baseball, <laughs> croquet? I know you're ADD and out of the box like the rest of us. <laughs> so baseball, croquet. Baseball, okay, perfect. Thank you, you completely screwed this thing up for me, which is exactly what I needed. Biggest risk for speakers to ask the audience, but thank you. They are not having the picnic at a lake. It's in the mountains in the Swiss Alps. The kids were dancing. It was the sound of music, Felix. Like, it was a huge hint for you, okay? <laughs> But, but the problem with us as CEOs is we see the future. We have all this detail and we walk around saying that we're highly intuitive. We are no more intuitive than our employees. But if we're the only ones that can see the movie, how can they possibly see what we can see? So the tool, this vivid vision tool that I've created, is one that you actually write and describe your company three years in the future. You describe it in vivid detail. When you're writing one, you've got to get out of the box. You can't sit in your office and write this. You have to go somewhere where you're inspired, somewhere around nature, because it will pull the ideas out of you. I want you to pretend you're literally going into a time machine to December 31st, 2018, and you describe your company in vivid detail. By the way, I'm the only guy in the room who remembers October 26, 25 years ago, because that was my 25th birthday. Today is my 50th birthday, so I do have those memories from back then. <laughs> So when you've gone into the time machine, you're standing in the future, you're looking around, you do a mind map and you describe every area of your business. You describe marketing, you describe IT, you describe finance. You literally pretend you're standing in those business areas describing what you see. You write two or three bullet points describing the physical office space, describing the culture, describing the energy. You write about what the media is saying about you. You write about what the customers are saying about you. You write about the pulse and the feelings as if you're standing in the future. And then your job is to pull those together into some rough notes, and then you get the rough notes and you combine them so they tell the one story. Your job as the entrepreneur stops at this point. Your unique ability is not to be a great writer. So you follow the Dan Sullivan method, you get it 80% done, you then pass it off really quickly to a great writer who can make it pop off the page. They can take your rough draft and make it pop, and then you hand it yet again to the next person and they can add some graphic design elements to take your brand and really elevate it to the next level. Now when you share this vivid vision with every employee, every customer, every potential customer, every supplier, everyone can now see what you can see. Imagine if every single person you ever touched could see the same detail of your business three years in the future that you see, then you can figure out how to reverse engineer it and put the plans in place and get the people in place to make it happen. When Jim Collins talked about first who, the part that he was missing was we need the who that can make that vision come true. But if you have a one sentence vision statement, at best they're guessing. When you write a vivid vision, it has to magnetize, it has to literally pull people towards you. Well, when you write one, it also has to be able to push some people away. Don't try to write this as a big kumbaya group hug. You're not trying to get everybody to love you. Remember when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone about seven, eight years ago? What was missing on the iPhone? The keyboard, right? Like, what a, what a disaster. Why would you ever introduce a phone without a keyboard? What an idiot. Well, the reality was there was about 3% of the people that thought he was genius and they loved it and they started to rally around it and then a few more and a few more. He didn't try to appeal to everybody. Now, if you've got a Blackberry, it's kind of like disco, right? Blackberries used to be cool, so was disco. But he didn't try to appeal to everybody, he tried to appeal to that one core group that would become the monomaniacs and they would actually spread it. What happens with a vivid vision when you roll it out is it starts to align. It starts to get everyone completely pulling in the same direction. Now, when you roll one out, it's gonna feel really stupid. Remember, everyone was trained the same way by a bunch of teachers who've never actually run businesses, so they told us to do a mission statement. So that's all we really know. Also, when you talk about the future in this detail in three or four pages describing the future, people keep showing you what today looks like. So I'm gonna show you a video of what it feels like to roll out a vivid vision. I'm gonna show you a video of a guy dancing. I want you to pretend that this is you. So this is you, can we turn it down a little bit? This is you rolling out your vivid vision. And you're convinced that if you talk about it and share it with enough people, it'll start to happen. But nobody joins in. 
You look at some of your suppliers sitting close to you, your spouse who's now completely sure that you've gone off the deep end. And you keep talking about the company three years in the future with all this detail, but they can only see today. Usually a salesperson joins in first. <laughs> you're gonna keep talking about the vivid vision. You're gonna keep sharing it. You're gonna put it on your website. You're gonna share it with the media. Every interview that you do with the media, you're gonna share it. And slowly what starts to happen is nothing. People start bugging you about it. They start pointing out that you're wrong. They start showing you that you're only focused on today. The vivid vision is three years out. 33% of it will happen in year three. 33% of it will happen in year two. 33% will happen in year one, much like building a house where you build the foundation. But you have to keep talking about it. A marketing guy will join in second. You keep communicating the vision until people are making fun of you. The marketing guy will join in, the sales guy will join in, and it's still three, four months that you're talking about the future and no one joins in. All of a sudden, a couple operations people will show up. It's usually marketing, sales, operations. The analyticals won't join in right yet. Finance people will start to show up. The media writes about you. All of a sudden, people are like, wow, we can all see this. They're starting to make the same decisions based on intuition that you would make. And now you're starting to see that it's actually starting to flood a little bit. More applications coming into your company. When we built 1-800-GOT-JUNK, the first year we ranked number one in British Columbia, this is what it felt like. The following year, number two in British Columbia, this is what it felt like. The following year, number two in all of Canada to work for was because people were completely aligned with where we were going. We didn't pay any more. We didn't have any better branding, but we had complete and utter alignment across the media, our customers, our suppliers. This goes on for about another two minutes until 45,000 people ended up dancing because one guy was going to dance until everybody danced. Now, if you want to figure out how to put the vision in place, you got to read the next 12 chapters of the book. Thanks for having me.